Look at this paradise. Beautiful tropical water lily. And what's the pup's name? Suko. Suko. Yeah, some puppies are about three or four centimeters. her horses. How much property does she have? About three acres. Nice. Hello from down under. I'm with Stephen from SJC Landscapes. What town are we in? I'll let you pronounce it. So we're in Myokum. You're not far from Mullumbimby, Byron Bay. There you go. And we're going to go check out another beautiful aquascape ecosystem water feature. This never gets old turning a corner <laughs> and seeing this. Wow. Look at this paradise. Right feet from the back of their patio. Oh, I love it. Beautiful tropical water lily right in the side of a hill. Love how these chairs are set up over here. Yeah. What a gorgeous waterfalls. So you said you built this, Stephen, about? Maybe about 12 months ago. So it's been here for a year? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's growing in nicely. All these plants for tube stocks, tiny, but we've had heaps of rain over the past 12 months. So the garden's really yeah. taken off now. What did it look like when you came here? Just all grass. Grass. A thin concrete pond, probably about four by three meters. No filtration in it, full of water lilies, full of silt. So we uh -huh. that out and rebuilt our ponds. You know, proper filtration. We've got the wetland filtration, getting you know, a box down here so you're achieving that crystal clear water i see the water lilies are there any fish in here there are yeah we've got some clappies they're about three or four centimeters like a native fish red. they're not native no no P we did platies like aquarium fish yeah, yeah. oh cool so, yeah you can probably see them hiding in here somewhere two different types of water lilies and all the native garden to try and attract the wildlife i love those two frame rocks it's there really so these darker kind of colored rocks, this big jumping rock out here, the framing, big dark rock over there all on the property, a couple of these ones. So nice to incorporate you know, something that was here before we started. Nice to meet you too. The pond guy, Greg, was yeah. Chardot? Chardot. That's Chardot, right. that's a beautiful name. Thank you. And what's the pup's name? Suko. Suko. Oh, no, yeah. Hi, Suko. Yeah. Okay, Chardon, explain to me how you went from a lawn to this. What was the motivation? We had a little pump there, tiny. It wasn't working there. All the fish got killed by birds. We always wanted something to swim in, but we didn't like chlorine, and yes. we didn't like salt water, and we didn't like maintenance. So then friends of ours said, why don't you do a natural pond? And we first thought, ah, oh, that's a lot of work. But then they said, no, no. And then we went to see one in Barangbara, and that got us turned on, and then we decided to do it. Okay. So how has it been living the aquascape lifestyle? How would you describe this to people? I'm sure people come back here and they're just blown away. Yeah. Everybody goes, oh my God, this is amazing. It's like uh, living in your own resort. Uh-huh, absolutely. Yeah. We are a lot more outside and we take a lot more, you know, time to sit and enjoy it. What kind of work is it? Because people aren't used to this. They're used to swimming pools, but they're not used to natural no. ponds. Well, I must say, honestly, hubby does more than I do. Uh-huh. He just seems to filter. Empties the skimmer Empty, back. Yes, sit. that's mm -hmm. right. Right. That's about it. We swim. Sometimes we use the little flippers a little bit. That's about it. So pretty low maintenance. Yes, yeah, very low. So it was a good investment. Very good investment. What yeah. was it like working with Stephen? We were watching them while they were doing, and Hobby said it's like watching archers doing because every stone is placed. It was amazing. It's a yeah. big jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. And how is. you put that together is up to each individual yeah. artist's eyes. Yeah, that's right. As a team, they really work nicely together, and it was a challenging way. Event. There was a, a lot, lot of rain, I heard. Of rain. And it, this was like big muddy ranch. Sort of. <laughs> Did you start to question maybe you made a mistake? No. Okay, no. that was good. <laughs> the only question was maybe we should have done this in the winter and <laughs> not in the wet season. But no, it was great. And you just love seeing the wildlife, the little lizards. See, it's a little water dragon over on that. Where, where's the water dragon? Underneath the mandragrass over there, just on the. Oh, yeah, I see it. I yeah, see it. Yeah. Okay, so that is a water dragon. 
right there. Can you see it? His, his tail. Build it and they will come. That is really cool. We don't get water dragons in Chicago. That is for sure. Cool. Look at that little guy. Just chilling out. Next is Aquascape Ecosystem Water Feature. Just absolutely spectacular. United. So what, Chardon, did you say your regret was? No, not mine. But my husband, his regret is that he didn't realize that the stones make it smaller. So he would have gone bigger. Bigger. It's a pretty big pond. <laughs> Always. I know. I know. The average person gets three water features. Big, bigger, biggest. This is pretty big, but of course, still want it bigger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if money wasn't the issue, I would have gone all around the house. Yeah, it's a big moat. <laughs> planted the job all of these ferns have germinated by themselves it's like these lilies have kind of germinated as well we've got the uh, banksia integrifolia over here which grow to about eight meter they attract a lot of native birds black cockatoos we've got native grasses crinum lilies which throw up a lovely white flower amanda grasses and myoporum is a native ground cover gets a lovely white flower all the planting through here we've tried to keep nice and low you know nothing over half a meter so that the fine don't lose the view from their house. Our blue chalk sticks are in the background. We're stringiers. You know, keep them trimmed so we don't obstruct the client's view. They've got fatty in here. Aquarium fish. They grow to about three or four centimeters. Lovely oranges, reds. Lovely water lily over there. We did have some issues with this job throughout the construction. So sort of planned the job would take about three weeks. And I think from the date the excavator got dropped off until the date where we signed off and completed the job was about three months. So we had probably the, one of the biggest rain events that we've experienced in the country while this was going on. So the day after we'd finished building the pond, we had all this rain and the, the clients called me you know, two days later and said, look, my pond is brown, overflowing. The, the overflow in the skimmer box couldn't keep up with the amount of rain that was landing in the pond. All of the runoff on the hill above here was running down over this retaining wall at the time. All of that pathway over there was level with pond edge. So all the water that came over, entered the pond and brought in all of the mud and silt and mulch and everything. And we did discuss draining the pond and restarting again, but we added the flocculant and some water treatments and in a few days, the pond had cleared back up again. So the wetland had really done its job. We did a flush straight away just to clean out all of that silt and crap that had been filtered out. But yeah, that was definitely a, a challenge on this job was the amount of rain that we'd had. So we installed this portent steel edging as a bit of a barrier to divert any of that water and we've had some pretty big downpours water flowing over the top of the retaining wall and we've been able to divert that away from the pond So we created this fire pit area over here. Some of the rocks that were left over from the job. So the clients can sit out here with their family and friends during the colder months and enjoy the pond all year round. Somewhere to warm up, somewhere to sit with their family. We had to retain this big bank up here. So the retaining wall was built before we started. We had a bit of an issue during the job with runoff coming from this hill. So we've created a bit of a swale drain over this side to divert all of the water down around the property 
and into a pit drain over here that's stopped any of the water for, from entering into the pond so we've got these native grasses here retaining wall installed this called cortan steel edging so just creating a bit of a barrier and buffer for any of the water that runs off to get diverted around the pond rather than entering the pond our waterfall up there from our wetland probably about seven eight hundred mil almost a meter we've even got like a little kind of secret waterfall i suppose down here all these ferns have naturally germinated we've got the clients entertaining area over here where they can sit out with their family friends their bedroom over here their lounge room and then kitchen and dining area in here so all the entertaining areas in the house look out to this pond and about 1.8 meters deep and you can see the pebbles on the bottom it is absolutely crystal clear see a little fish down here flatty take you up and have a look at the wetland these stairs around the back here some more retaining you can see a little water dragon just there running around so there's a family of water dragons that live here about five or six of them you know that's part of the ecosystem pond that you wouldn't get with a normal swimming pool with chemicals in it there's our wetland filter snorkel and centipede Got some water lilies some some frog mouth some reeds sort of filtering out the water and you can see the water that's coming up through the wetland filter absolutely crystal clear this is the heart of the system that keeps it all clean and clear the job's being planted up with all native plants so nothing has been irrigated you know all these plants tolerate the conditions that we have in Australia. Yeah.